Hey, welcome back to the channel. All right, it's time for the season 11 Battlegrounds update to the Battlegrounds tier list and rankings. You can see we've moved the face cam to the left. Everyone can see that legend. What a wonderful suggestion by a uh, commenter. So thank you very much for that. You can all read the legend. The one thing I will say before we dive right into this is remember Battlegrounds is very complex. It's not just about having the best champions right there, updating the meta every single time. It's now twice a season as well. And now we're starting to see attacker tactics and defender tactics that are even uh, mirroring what we're seeing in Alliance War. They're really helping one class sometimes or just even a tag have a significant prominence in there. So you want to keep this in mind and I'm continuing to use this rank up sheet with the help of the MCOC Illuminati, all of their experience. I got Celestial 6 this last season. I put out a video on that because I was considering retiring at the game and I want to continue to try to have some fun, see if we can't reignite that passion. So we've updated this, I'm getting this out. And so this is supposed to be a snapshot. This is supposed to be me talking about the metas and how they are shifting. And then also champions that just seem to often be coming up, be very, very valuable. Ones I'm happy I have ranked for offensive, defensive use. And then again, we only have one dual threat category. Defenders and attackers are just as important, if not more so, depending on how you've set up your deck, and the strategy you're going to use. So make sure you take a look at those two when you are considering all of this. Okay, let's go ahead and jump into it. Oh, this, the screenshot will be put up on Twitter, thanks to the help of Miss DK. And then also this uh, spreadsheet will be linked in the description. You can click on the links there for the MCOC Illuminati so you can go subscribe to their channels as well. Let's go ahead and move through this as we talk about the champions that have had an update or change in their rankings. As you can see with the dual threat tier above all, and that's part of why I feel comfortable giving that longer intro is, there's been no changes. We feel I feel very comfortable, very confident. In fact, if anything, as we went through these last few seasons, I feel even more confident and comfortable in these champions. We moved Mysterio up recently. Photon is new to the game. Uh, and yeah, I mean, that's it as I look at it. Those There really isn't anyone specifically I want to bring up. Mysterio has been phenomenal. He's not the, uh, he's, not a, uh, he's not a very fast attacker very usually, but the defenders he can help you out with, like Rintra, Domino, that sort of thing, are so uh, vital, let's say, to have counters to that bringing in a good defender like him, who can then be used offensively for champions like that, I think really still solidifies the spot up there. And then of course, the same could be said for Photon. You how much I think of Photon and her ability as a dual threat. Let's go ahead and move on to the attackers. Okay, we've now moved on to the attackers. Remember that champions are listed once on the sheet in their best possible category. So you're gonna see the emoji there uh, letting you know like OG Hulk can be used defensively. I've actually used him defensively quite a few times to win rounds, despite him being such an amazing, amazing attacker. Okay, so we're looking in the Mystic tier, Mystic class, and there's really no one new in the tier above all or the top shelf of attackers. I realized I've forgotten to make sure you everyone can see the super premium attackers too. So I've removed the face cam. You can see Dr. Voodoo's down there. I mean, no, no, I think it would take a very specific meta or if you just have a, a maturing deck, a maturing account for you to bring in uh, champions that are in that level there. But I do think they're worth mentioning because there could be, there may be, there might be metas where they really do shine and you're wanting to bring in some champions like that. Or maybe you just ring them up. You're, they're one of your favorite champs. You know, to use them really well. You're going to get a little bit more out of them than your typical player. So kind of keep that in mind. You can see Dr. Voodoo and then I will bring the face cam back up. We're now into the science class. The first champion we're going to talk about is Morbius. Brand new into this game. And I know there's a lot of back and forth on him. And I think part of that is because, you know, it's an exciting character, right? Like people wanted Morbius anyways. And then uh, that movie came out, right? And then the meme and a lot of just fun. And then I, I don't know about you. I don't know about you, but I know I love big yellow numbers. I love a big SB2, uh, uh, big SB1 is even better, but a big SB2 that does a ton of damage. I love it. And so when we see that, we see videos with that, it's very cool. I know I got excited and I'll be honest, he's not as good as Silk. I mean, no way am I saying that he is. But what I am saying is that because I don't have Silk, I was kind of hoping to get seven star Morbius, put him into my deck and that he might take some of those fights that she was doing. Now, unfortunately, I don't think it's gonna work out the way I was hoping. One of the main reasons being, I have a seven star Mobius, I did choose that. I think that is the uh, a smart long-term play because seven stars are so incredibly powerful relative to the six stars. But I don't have mine awakened and I don't see myself chasing that awakening ability. So it's gonna be a bit, I think he's gonna come into the December 
Titan Crystal. But again, those are so rare and the chances of pulling a specific champion are so small that I, I wanna put him here because I think you're gonna see really cool uses out of him. He is obviously going to be the tactic attacker for this season, but that could change, that may change. And so he may lose that. I still think that if you've got him awakened, I think you're gonna see some really cool stuff out of the six stars. And while he needs to place those debuffs to do his damage, for Battlegrounds, so does like a Cassie Lang. So keep that in mind. Now Cassie's uh, buff immune and has some other things going on. So again, I don't want to say he's as good as Cassie. I'm not saying he's as good as Silk. But right now, this is where I feel good about him. We've got the crystal ball emoji. Say like, this is new, this is initial. For those of you who are watching this a little bit later in, or you know, the Battleground season starting the day I'm recording this, let me know how you're doing with him. And if your Morbius is awakened or not, because I think once you get him awakened and you can feel like you can reliably place those ruptures, there's gonna be some more of those mystic defenders that you're gonna be able to use them for. And mystics are such a dominant force in defense on Battlegrounds that having a champion that can take all or a variety of them is very, very valuable. So uh, I'm not shutting the door on Morbius, but I do wanna call out that this is initial and there is not there is a non-zero chance that you see him move back down to uh, top shelf attackers. And then we see him move back up because people start to get him awake. And so a lot of talking to Morbius, but he's new. And I think that was important to address. And moving through, we're now going to go to skill and we have a promotion to the tier above all. This was really brought up uh, by Eris, by mu and TJ, Tom Jarvis, phenomenal battle rounds players, as you know. I believe Tom Jarvis actually made Celestial 4 this last season, despite taking it easy in his words. <laughs> Ooh. These, these players, these players. Uh, they brought it up, they said, you know what, Vega, they understood my hesitation on Black Cat and why I've uh, really been stubborn in keeping Black Cat at top shelf, but they're like, listen, with the Relic, with there being so many defenders where it's not even needing to be the node anymore, there's just so many prominent defenders in Battlegrounds, meta defenders, that if you can turn off the ability accuracy and the Relic allows her to do it early. So maybe there's a bit of a high skill cap here, right? You're gonna wanna maybe be able to be very skilled with that. And I could add that relic here. Why don't you, the viewer, let me know what you think. So I know a lot of you have been pushing me to move up Black Cat uh, herself too. If I ever get that seven star, I'll probably really invest in it. Right now I'm working on some other rank ups. I don't see me testing her too much, but you know, if Eris and TJ are saying it, chances are it's, it's accurate, a good placement. So we wanna reflect that. And then you can see the rest of the uh, skill attackers there. Let's go ahead and move on to, uh, you know, Danny Moonstar. Actually, I'm gonna do this now until uh, until we see her rebalancing. So you guys are seeing this uh, live. I'm gonna move her here. You know, I don't, uh, you, if you've watched my videos enough, you've heard me talk at length about Danny Moonstar. So I'm not gonna go over, over the whole thing again. Extremely powerful champion. I actually do enjoy like general questing with her. And I think, you know, that's a successful champion release in MCOC for sure. We need those champions too. Uh, I just had my own personal wants and desires that so many of us bring when we love a champion that's coming to the game. You know, we want them to be everything that we want. And uh, that doesn't mean it's gonna be good for the game. <laughs> so I'm gonna move Danny Moonstar there. Still very effective, still can do a ton of things, but let's put her there and then let's see what, 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 what MCOC tells us as far as, what Kabam tells us as far as her rebalancing period. Uh, we're gonna now move on to the tech class. And we've got a little bit to talk about with tech. Big promotion, Viv Vision. Now, I know she had her fans before her rebalancing came out and I, I saw it, but I also know a lot of very, very smart players, you know, Simula, Bitter Silk, uh, people like this who really loved Viv Vision, but they're like, look, she can come up short. She can come up short. And so the breadth of the fights that she can take just isn't there. She also has a very high skill cap. I am now playing mine at rank three and there's just things you need to get used to. Something as simple as like not repairing. It, it, that's not gonna work with her or at least it's not gonna fit her play style or play with the high skill level that you need to to get those really high scores. So as a result, I, I have stayed stubborn with her but the rebalance has come out and she is so powerful and this is something we talk about in, in, in these videos, right? You know that I like to take my dual threats early. It's very helpful to me in the drafting stage. Well, those attackers or those dual threats, if they can take a breadth of defenders, that's even better. It's gonna set you up for success and make you less reliant on needing a certain champion to show up in the second, third, and fourth stages of the draft. 
So she is great. And she even has some defensive use, right? Uh, at least maybe there's a little bit of stall. Her health pool is really little, but I think it's the power drain that she's doing. Power steal, power drain, power burn, something like that. Uh, so keep that in mind with her. I have this crystal ball because it is brand new, but I, I really feel strongly that people who've invested the time to really learn how to use her are gonna do, they're gonna do some really, really impressive stuff with her in Battlegrounds. I'm very excited about her, and I hope that I am one of those people if I can get the time. Uh, moving on down, we're gonna talk about now top shelf attackers. We're gonna get to Iron Doom. You know, if you've been a fan of this channel, you know that I, you know, I, I keep him rated relatively highly across these tier lists, mainly at the recommendation of the MCOC Illuminati. They're very smart players. And one of the things we talk about is, you know, if you invest in really how to learn a champion, you're going to use them better than a, a champion who's superior in a tier, a tier list, right? Well, I think we kind of saw that with uh, infamous Iron Man. I also think that we've seen other champions come along who don't necessarily do the exact same thing as him. And I'm going to compare it to regular OG Iron Man, who's now buffed. All the things that I was, in theory, using infamous Iron Man to do offensively and defensively, can be done so much better by OG Iron Man. There's a bishop counter. I'm going to use OG Iron Man. I know Iron Man can do it, but OG Iron Man can also do it and also take a bunch of other fights relatively quickly they both have uh the defender mechanism where they can really stall it out with that heal but like i said uh og iron man also then has like the, the nullify immunity for his armor up so it's not that iron doom is bad i'm not taking a victory lap being like i was right all along i was smarter than the no i wasn't what it is is i think the things that i did not like about him excuse me i had to clear my throat there the things i did not like about him there's been enough time in the game the game has matured that I think those things are now shining through and we now have superior options as we go along. Is Iron Doom still good? Yes, absolutely. He never was amazing, he never was terrible. What's happened is, is that the game's just grown around him. What we're being asked to do has grown and matured. And there's champions who can also do what he does or get you through those fights well enough and then also do a bunch more. Let's go ahead and move on to Cosmic Attackers. And the first one we're going to talk, and the only one, Gladiator, new champion. You know, not all champions are gonna be Battlegrounds champions. I love Battlegrounds, uh, but even I have to say, like, I'm glad they're not all Battlegrounds champions because I don't want to tw uh, chase 24 champions a year. I, I don't want to do it. I don't I don't have the rank of resources for it. And so if Gladiator's not meant for Battlegrounds, so be it. We are seeing videos where he's taking out Rintras, which I hate Rintra. So if he's really good for that, and if he has some defensive qualities and things like that, as we see that in the game, as people get him, and if he's a decent defender, you're gonna see him move up or move up in value because anyone who has a little bit of a dual threat purpose gets a little bit of extra value. So uh, that's Gladiator. I would not rank up Gladiator for Battlegrounds. That would not be what I would do personally because while any champion in this game can look good at times or in the hands of very high skilled players, there's other champions who are going to be more efficient or maybe uh, more well suited. Or like I said, you're going to be able to take a breadth of fights with them as opposed to uh, champions in this tier. Let's go ahead and take a look at those important, important defenders. Okay, we're moving on to defenders. And again, not, just not a lot of movement. We, I, I've been feeling really good about the Battlegrounds tier list for a while now. We did the big uh, improvements to it. And so it's making sense and and you know it's it's making sense it's mature it's reached a maturity phase uh, in its life just like the general tier list did as well as we move we've got our, our, our new champion here and mystic i am placing werewolf by night in the tier above all there's a beefy mystic defender right and we've talked about this at length mystics tend to be your go-to or they tend to have at least some defensive capabilities if for no other reason than mystic dispersion and then you add in some other like uh difficulty in punishing specials, or something happening after specials, much like we're seeing with Werewolf by Night, or big tankiness, big health pulls like we're seeing by Werewolf by Night. And then also, just by virtue of being new, he definitely does seem situated to be at least a good defender, and then being Mystic just adds on to it. So that is why Werewolf by Night is there. We're gonna see how he plays out now that he's actually in the game. Also, just a quick mention that, you know, uh, I believe it was Chuck and some other commenters kept mentioning Wong. And what well, we definitely in the last season saw Wong do some really impressive things. It was accentuated a bit by the note. But Wong is, is a tough defender. You often want to have counters and then can get things to do offensively, which is why he's got the cross swords uh, emoji there. Now we're moving on to the science class. 
fact, I'm realizing Wong should actually have the fencing person emoji, so we'll get that fixed. Now we're moving on to the science class. No changes, no changes in the skill class either. Felt really good about these as we've been moving on. We do this uh, between all the seasons. Mutant, same thing. Tech, same thing. Now Cosmic, you know, this is the ever evolving, ever evolving dr dramatics of the placement of Terax. Terex has moved back up as I'm start as I'm facing seven stars. Sort of absorbing, man. Uh, there's a really a chance for something to go wrong. I know there are some natural counters that do a phenomenal job, and people can come out of those fights very impressively. But something could go wrong, and also again, this is seven stars, and that's why that seven star emoji is there. You know, if you've got your six star rank five, six two hundred, you're probably getting some decent results with him uh, defensively. I'm, I'm sure you are. But there's this it's the seven stars. I'm going to continue to talk about these videos because I, I really think I'll, at least some of the vocal community that comments on YouTube is, isn't fully registering it. And that's that seven stars are significantly more powerful than the six star variety of that same champion. That's why they look so impressive. So what I've been trying my best and the Illuminati has been trying our best to kind of let everyone know is, yeah, rank up your seven stars, have a good time. They're very powerful, yes. But as the game continues to move on and mature, and we're seeing more and more seven stars available to everyone in battleground stacks, in war, in questing, what have you, that champion that seemed powerful because they were a seven star may come down a little bit because they're now competing with the same variety. I hope that makes sense to folks. I'm going to continue to try to explain that. Uh, so no one just ranks up champions seeing they're forever going to be this powerful dominant champion. And then they realize later like, oh, they're very good, but they aren't as good as I thought they were. I now understand what Vega was trying to explain to me. That's the tier list. Uh, you know, again, it's supposed to be a snapshot. We update this monthly. I know I've been using it. I got Celestial 6 this last season. You know, hopefully you've seen my videos talking about it. I may get Celestial in the future. I may not, and I'm very, very okay with that. I just want to be good at the game. I want to have fun at the game. But investing those two, three, four, five, six hours a day that the very, very top players are putting in just isn't something that fits in my life. But we can be competitive at this game and not play that much. Uh, you know, a lot of players who have, who don't spend a ton, they're very smart at Battlegrounds and they are beating players like myself. I lose two decks that are not nearly as strong as mine as far as rank ups are concerned because the player outdrafts me. And I don't just mean RNG, I mean, they back me into corners. So there is a lot of strategy there. If you study it and you put in some time and some repetition and you really know your deck, I think you can, I know you can, very much improve your Battlegrounds performance and have a lot of fun with it. Let, as usual, let us know what you think we got right. Let us know what you think you got wrong. Make sure to share your experience of what kind of, where you're playing, what rank the champions were. That is always very helpful. Make sure you go check out that MCO uh, Illuminati and keep an eye on Twitter for the screen size shot of this spreadsheet. Thank you so much for watching. Take care.